universities, public universities, mm -hmm. management and governance of public universities, or university council, <coughs> or the Ministry of Education, or chancellor, or political appointee, yeah. or vice chancellor, or political, like, all those things. And then now we have what we have in the country as our public universities. Wait. Let's talk about their governance. The University Academic Staff Union is one what brings together the academic staff of universities and they come together as a union. Now the Nairobi branch, the University of Nairobi branch, the Secretary General is called Dr. Maloba Wekesa. He's our next guest in the Situation Room. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. Uh, Welcome to the hot seats of the Situation Room. Thank you, Eric. Make yourself comfortable. It's not really that hot. It's not hot, eh? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's it's really just thing. Yeah. <laughs> Quite warm. <laughs> Very good. It's supposed to be comfortable. It it's is. It's not to be uncomfortable. No, 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 no. City. Yes. Why don't you give Dr. Maloba the day's proverb? Our proverbs for the whole of this week are from the country of Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. The content of a peanut is enough for two friends to share. Not to eat to their fill, uh uh, to share. The content of a peanut mm. is enough for two friends to share. Yes. Dr. Maloba? You Maloba. know, I actually have something nearly equivalent. I thought you were mm -hmm. going to say, I actually have a peanut. <laughs> 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 I was ready for it. <laughs> but this one is more domesticated. I don't know if you've heard about it. Mm. Uh, Tell us, please. That a village can share the tie of a grasshopper. I haven't heard, but it makes perfect sense. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yes. I, I think it speaks on. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Isn't it's just it? that the Bukinabes grow peanuts. <laughs> your village. <laughs> you no, know, people hunt grasshoppers. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> same thing. But What's I think for me, um, it just shows the boundless nature of magnanimity mm. you can never be magnanimous enough that's it mm. and you shouldn't be you should, i don't think so you I should think, not uh, put a limit you shouldn't put a limit goodness should never actually be limited because being magnanimous basically that's just it mm. indeed yes share as widely as possible city what do you think uh I think the good doctor believes what he's saying, and if he didn't, he wouldn't have gone into the politics of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> of the university. Mm. It is a thankless task. That's why he's in that. Yes. You, you, th there are jobs you do not do if you are not inclined in a certain direction. Yes, there's, a, a, there's an element of, yes, somebody's pursuing a career, yes, ambition, but there is a larger element of service. There, there, there are people who are that way inclined. Uh, yes. Good uh, actually, it's true. Uh, if you go back to the history of Uwasu, the nature and the formation of Uwasu was based on altruism. Because then I have to go back to people like Willy Mutunga, you know, at the sacrifice of not just their career, at their that lives, time, it was actually. a sacrifice of their life. Mm -hmm. So it will be extremely decrepit of me right now if mm -hmm. I am in this position to mm -hmm. imagine mm -hmm. that I should not eschew the same kind of values. Mm -hmm. It would be totally inappropriate. What does Wasu stand for? What does it do? What's the mandate of Wasu? It's a Apart from union. just campaigning for you know the welfare of its members, what else? That's the common debt, welfare. Mm. The only problem is that people narrow it down. To mm. When you say welfare, they reduce it into a salary mm. <laughs> component. Yes. Yes. Which is, I mean, it is so far from the truth. Mm. Yes, we are a labor union. And obviously, labor unions have certain <laughs> specific tasks that they have to perform. Mm. But to reduce, especially a labor union of dons, to reduce it into a salary component, it misses the forest by the trees. <laughs> How did this diminishing of mandates begin? Because usually, by the time an opinion of something has been formed, there must have been a habitual um, show 
of something that would have reduced it to that. And I think that forms the basis for the conversation that we'll have today. Because why think of you in a certain way if I have not seen something that would then make me think that regularly? You know, frankly, if I have to speak the truth, mm. and which sometimes I'm very hesitant of, is then I'll end up talking about my own teachers and some of the missteps that they made. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, I'm very hesitant to do that because over the period, especially as Kenya, you know, grew out from getting independence, moving all the way to the first president, then when Moi took over, we, we know what happened. Mm. And we know the compromises that people had to make. Mm. Hard economic times sometimes, you know, inclining people into certain directions. People need to survive. Then they end up making mistakes. And, you know, it's very unforgiving. Society is quite unforgiving, especially when a professor makes a mistake. Because mm. you expect the professor to know better. Mm. So when he does make a mistake, and the mistake is reflected way into the future, those of us who come, and they have been taught by the same professors. Mm -hmm. Now, I was brought up in that generation where your senior is always right. Wait, but Malim, just tell us. <laughs> I, I'm very it's hesitant okay. to say, but the thing is this, there were mistakes <laughs> made here and there, and uh, those mistakes, well, someone has to rectify them. What are these mistakes? Mm. Because you have to rectify something that you identify. What are these mistakes? If you go back into what Ndu is asking, yes. at what point did the entire mandate of Uasu get reduced to just thinking these dons won't appear right well basically is when <clears throat> if you go back in time 1963 who are the highest paid employees in uh, kenya teachers yes now teachers at the highest level are who principals lecturers mm -hmm. no you teachers you start with teachers you go to principal then from <laughs> principal you go now all the way all mm -hmm. the way to now yes. to the professors isn't yes. it mm. they were actually earning higher than uh, permanent secretaries yes they were yes so at what point did the reverse happen you see that mm -hmm. and when that reverse happens and then someone notices no this is not right something must break yeah and then the agitation begins and then the entire public because of the numbers we are quite few mm. because of the numbers then a lot of heat is generated and the discourse sometimes is controlled beyond the lecturers themselves mm. mostly the media is focusing only on that some of the media people might not even have the history mm. well the benefit now moves to the politicians and the politicians start saying I thought this was a calling. You see that? Mm. <laughs> I thought this was a calling. What, what, why are you asking for money? You, 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 this is a calling. You see that? Mm. And then the narrative is built. They are abandoning their calling. Mm. They are asking for money now. And uh, well, it is sustained over time. And it's unfortunate. But Uwasu is much bigger than that. Okay. Sure. Yes. Have we seen Uwasu over the years talk about some of the things that we're seeing coming out. Let's use the Presidential Working Party on Education Reforms and the proposals that they've made in the last you know, couple of weeks. Let's use that as an example that could probably feed into this, what you're speaking of. Usually, a body will be known for either what folks are saying about that body or what the body itself is speaking out on. One of the big issues that comes out is own source funding for universities, right? Have we seen Wasu, let's say, in the last five years, in the last 10 years, come out robustly speaking about how universities need to be made as institutions of innovation, institutions of exportation of knowledge and understanding, so that by the time a proposal like this comes out, we hear, actually, the unions have been talking about things like this. They've been trying to move for such kind of change to come about. But if we hear that over 10 years, every time we heard Uwasu speak was, they're saying, we're going to strike if salaries have not been increased. We are going to strike if these allowances have not been paid. Do you see how that narrative then would be formed? And I'm asking, do we see that conversation is around some of the things that are needed at the university level 
as opposed to the things that you would not like to color the image of the union okay now this question is valid but it is it is missing the entire crux of where the problem is wasu is only a social partner okay mm. it's only a social partner what you are saying is you're putting me on the spot to explain why i'm not able to do one or two things no 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 i'm asking if the yes. union has been involved in speaking out after some of these things i am not asking you why things are happening the way they are i'm saying in the social construct in which you have been constituted have we seen and adding to the conversation on a social platform that's all i'm asking okay all right now hang on let me, i got this now mm. you see you are asking on the social construct but me i want to begin from the structural point of view how are we structured first before we go to the social point mm -hmm. because that is just a minuscule part how are we structured the right question would be how is the university actually structured public universities how are they structured first mm -hmm. okay so, so that us. this mm -hmm. social aspect can now be able to be seen to manifest right. you see that as mm -hmm. you've seen that that's the question that you'd like to answer mm -hmm. let's answer that question how <laughs> uh -huh. is it structured exactly and um it's unfortunate that uh, this has to go back to 2010. If I have to just move as quickly as possible, I can omit all the history and simply start with the promulgation of the new constitution. Mm -hmm. Okay? The promulgation of the new constitution heralded quite a lot of things. Okay? It was a fresh start for the country. Mm -hmm. A lot of things had to be re-engineered. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the first among the things that had to be re-engineered was something called the Universities Act. Mm -hmm. It had now to conform to the, to the new constitution. You see that? Mm -hmm. I'll come to the social aspect, but let me start from there first. Mm -hmm. The architecture of how universities are created. Okay? So the Universities Act was uh, inaugurated around 2012 so that it conforms to that constitution now unfortunately a lot of those things were experiments a lot of them like how do you select councils of public universities mm -hmm. remember now you see you are now enacting a new constitution and you now must come up with a master a master plan mm. the population is uh, increasing there's a youth bulb a bulge okay education needs to be expanded we need access by our younglings coming into the universities so definitely you form that structure okay that university act came into play so that it conforms with the constitution like i said it was an experiment so what now, what different what additions or differences did it have oh yeah so number one is the council and the constitution of the council you've just mentioned I, i'm going i'm going slowly fast i mm -hmm. want to explain you know now as a lecturer we always begin uh, the point uh, and i don't want to use any you start with the known and move to the end. <laughs> yes <Yeah, known. laughs> okay all right mm -hmm. so what do we know there was a new constitution all right We've they're public universities that. so you need to create a superstructure we of have. how these public universities will be structured we so have come up with an that. act okay okay once you come up with an act then even universities which are established like the university of nairobi is the oldest university mm. okay that means it had to draw now a new charter you see that okay because the old charter was not conforming to what the new constitution had wanted and what that university act had stipulated so that means you had to do a new charter like the university of nairobi the charter was 2013. it was signed by margaret kamar okay and it was inaugurated mm -hmm. so that means now you have three levels the constitution then below that constitution is the universities act then below that universities act is the university charter that university charter is the law it is what now creates now the new university of nairobi that now conforms to the constitution in accordance to the act by the, the university the universities act 
Okay? Now, you get that first. Yes. Before we'll go to the social part, because mm. you can see we were rushing to the social part. Prof, and you'd crucify me for what? Uh, land this plane, please. Okay. Yes. Now, here is the problem mm -hmm. in that universities act. We changed the architecture of how we were going to appoint the people at the council. You see that? Yes. The people at the council, how were they... Why is the council this important? What does it do? Because the council are the owners of the university. Uh, explain. When you say owners, what do you mean? They are the employers. All right? Like the, yeah, they're the board of management. It's like the yes. board. No, no. Board of management is actually below. They're, they're, they're at policy level, but... If yeah. you have to sue the university, you sue the council. So essentially you're saying they're, they're like the shareholders. I really walk away from this shareholder thing because it has now received a lot of connotation. Let me not call it that. The shareholders are actually students, lecturers, and the, you know, <laughs> and even the general public. Mm. But the council is like this exalted body. Okay? The exalted body that shows direction. Who do they represent exactly? Actually, from uh, the public itself, the ministry, you know, all the stake the relevant stakeholders, okay? And I'm saying relevant, in this case, within the context of what that University Act stipulated. Okay. All right? But let me come first to explain something about a university council. And even, just even a normal school, a normal high school, who are the owners? It is that board of management, is it? it? Yeah. Yes. Now, do you know how it is constituted? By the way, there is an act in the Ministry of Education mm. that constitutes yes. that board. I think there are 14 people, isn't it? Mm. All right? There will be parents, okay? There will be the community, okay? If the community, for instance, the church is the one which donated the land, yes. the church will be represented there, isn't it? Yes. Remember, the parents are actually also being selected from each of the representative classes. Is it it? Mm -hmm. Well, the, fortu the fortunate thing we have is I am an immediate former chairman of such a board of management. So you know how it's the constituted. Village, so I know exactly mm -hmm. how it's constituted. And it is owned by that community. That it's means a community. The reason why it is done so is because the values of that institution, the ethos, everything about that institution, those are the people who know it. Yes. All right? And it is not a group wait. of strangers. So you're suggesting the council who are then appointed, elected, nominated by virtue of this new constitution, do not represent. So far away from it. I'm telling you, these are aliens. They are nowhere close to that university. But I understand. You see, what happened was this. Eh? Mm. The president was the chancellor of all universities. Yes. You remember? Yes. When the constitution changed, the first thing Kibaki said, I don't want this kind of job. It is taking me too much. Why should I be? Mm -hmm. He said, I'll remain a chancellor of one. And he chose Maseno, I mean, uh, Masinde Muliro, mm -hmm. most. Mm -hmm. Then he gave out the rest. He said, I don't want this job. People should take charge of these jobs. Mm -hmm. All right? So chancellors were distributed elsewhere. Okay? And even the crafting now of those councils, because of that un new universities act, changed. I can assure you, you see the way the school is actually crafted. Mm. <laughs> the universities ran away from that that is why i called it an experiment and that experiment is alien it there's but, nowhere but what does, does the law then, say now uh, thank you eric yeah what does the law say the law stipulates obviously mm. that there will be nine council members right okay nine four of them are actually uh, like let me not say none okay let's start with the vice chancellor is the ex-official meaning that by virtue of the fact that he is uh, occupying the office of vice oh, chancellor. Yes. Mm -hmm. That one is granted. Okay? okay. Now, it's a public institution financed by the public. That means there has to be a representative from the Ministry of Finance. Yeah. There has to be also a linkage with the ministry, line ministry. So there has education, to be a person education. from the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. All right? And then there has to be a chair of council. Mm -hmm. And we say the chair of council must be a, an and PhD. All right? Mm -hmm. With experience about management of such an institution why do they insist that you must have a phd well that is actually in the act and it is stipulated just imagine this yes it's, you, in, it's in the act but it doesn't mean i can't ask why can okay I? you really can ask why actually <laughs> it's a very good question to ask why <laughs> yes just tell me one thing yes. you are coming to be in charge of a group of people mm. 
who are actually the highest concentration mm. of academic PhDs. Learning. Academic learning. Yes. Mm. Yes. And you yourself, you don't. And yet you want to sit when you are getting, they are getting promoted to be full professors and you are not. Mm. Now, does that really look like something which will be reasonable? Uh, it looks like something that will not be acceptable. Exactly. And you see, if I sit and you want to promote me, and you don't have my qualifications, what are you promoting me to? And you are the one who is the chair. Come on. All right. So here is what happened. So, so the chair, the so chair those, must be an earned PhD. An earned PhD. I'm telling you, there was that idealism about it. Okay. And the idealism that time with this new constitution was that let us get people from Merit. outside the university. Mm. That idealism, let's get people from industry. Let us get the best out there. Those who actually have done the best out there to lead this academic institution into its future. You can imagine at the university, this is the center where we embrace disagreement. Mm. In fact, we encourage you to disagree. Okay? Mm -hmm. You are coming to lead a group of individuals who sometimes more, for instance, as I am seated here, I cannot arrogate myself that because I'm the secretary, then I'm the brightest. I actually know there are so many brilliant brains out there. In fact, most of them taught me. Okay? I only have the honor of holding this position for the time, the very short time that I'm here. Mm -hmm. All right? And it's just a tour of duty, by the way. But they are brilliant minds. Now you can imagine at a superstructure level. The so, bar was set Four members so high. we've established who they are. Okay. Vice Chancellor, Treasury, Education, Chair. Then the now three? the rest of the five. Okay. Those five, the entire... <laughs> you can imagine, you lump it to one person called the Cabinet Secretary. Who until recently now have become politicians. Remember the new constitution said, we want cabinet secretaries who are never politicians. Mm. Isn't that what the new constitution said? Mm. We don't want them to be politicians because we know what politicians do. All right? Get very qualified individuals. You want the minister, a minister of roads, get a road engineer. You want a minister, a, a cabinet secretary of health. Get the best who knows health administration. That's what we, that's what the new constitution did. There's something unique about Kenyans, by the way. We are very good at taking a very idealistic position, then immediately making a mockery of it. Mm. That is what we are so good at. How then did we make a mockery of these other five positions? Because now yes. we've qualified the others. Yes. Now, who's supposed to fill these slots? The slot is supposed to be filled by the cabinet secretary. Yes, until recently, the cabinet secretary decides. Yes, the cabinet secretary in the Ministry of Education. After they put out adverts for people to apply. Yes, to the cabinet secretary. Yes. Now here is a, here is the worst part. In fact, now you are talking about the council. Yes. Let's go to the chancellor. Let's come back. The chancellor doesn't even. <laughs> there, is, there is no application process. How do you get a chancellor then? Let's come. Back it's supposed to be something Let's which is decided back. at Senate. You so, propose. So so so. Yes. Basically. The Cabinet Secretary for Education has six slots. Five. Five. Independent. Obviously, even at plus getting even the Chancellor, plus I mean, the getting even the, get, getting the, the, the Vice Chancellor, he'll play a role. You see that? But directly, yes. he has the five, yes. plus he sits on the board. No, no, no. The Cabinet a, a, Secretary, a, uh, he'll appoint someone. A representative of his yes. sits on the board. That so means he sits engineer. on the board. Yes. So he has six. You've started by telling us just the composition of the university's council and the importance of the council. You say the cabinet secretary for education has a say on appointment of a majority of the members of the council. And what's wrong with that? Well, like I said, it is uh, something which was an experiment because it is something which has not been done anywhere else. Okay. Mm. If you consider the most um, progressive uh, universities in the world, University of Helsinki, University of California in Berkeley, all right? University of Cape Town. How do they constitute their councils, okay? Even here, right here within our own East African environment, mm. University of Rwanda, University of Dar es Salaam, mm. University, Makere University, you will see, and uh, I can even give you a composition, like for instance, uh, University of London, it has one chairperson, the VC, 
the DVC, they are independent members and then four heads of member institutions. Mm -hmm. If you are to consider uh, something like um, Makere, okay, there's a chairperson, vice chairperson, vice chancellor, DVCs, minister of education, district council representatives, two academic staff members, okay, senate representatives, st senate staff representatives, administrative staff representatives, okay. Let us even go pre when it was Moy days. How was this constituted? Okay. Here is how the University of Nairobi Council was constituted. It had a chairman, a vice chairman, and an honorary treasurer to be appointed by the chancellor. Mm -hmm. It had a vice chancellor, deputy vice chancellors, principals of each constituent colleges, the principal of each college within the university. Okay. Of course, then there were 10 more members appointed by the president because the president was the chancellor, remember. Mm. Okay. Okay. One person appointed by the Gandhi Memorial Academy. Okay. Mm. Two persons appointed by the convocation among its members. Mm -hmm. One person appointed by the government in each state for which time being specified territory. That was Nairobi now. Mm. Okay. One member appointed by the staff association of the university. Two members elected by students. You see that? Mm. Because they are actually a stakeholder. Okay. Not more than two members co-opted to the council from time to time. Co-opted, meaning members of the, the, the people from the disabled community. You see that? Mm. You bring them in. Why? Because you want ownership when decisions are being made. And divergent views. Okay? Mm -hmm. You would want the structure of how that university is constituted to be so solid all right that the decisions they make they always must consider what are our traditions what is the future i think what i'm just getting that's different here because i see political appointments in the moi time the, yes. the chancellor was a politician was the president was appointing people willy-nilly as he wished was appointing the the, the chancellor uh, the vice chancellors had a say in who becomes the deputy vice chancellor would then also if he wished have a say on who becomes the principals in the various colleges. All those are the chancellor's appointees. I'm not saying they didn't have weaknesses. The current one yes. is sort of safeguarding and saying, so the cabinet secretary has got to go to the, there has to be some public participation. I'm not saying... Advertise and then publicly select. And there is an opportunity for other stakeholders to have a voice in who the cabinet secretary appoints as a chancellor, as I mean in the council. What I'm saying is that I'm not saying that that system did not have witnesses. Mm. What we were supposed to do was to improve on it. And we're saying we did not improve on it at all. What we did was an experiment that does not happen anywhere in the world. And the experiment has failed? Totally failed. And we can go all the way to look at any council, by the way. Mm. All right. We set the bar, by the way, very high. The bar was this. Like I said, the chairman has to be what? Chair of council has to be who? A PhD and PhD, all right? Mm. And then below, council members. And they said minimum of masters with 10 years of university management. Ten, the bar has to be that high. Mm. And we were thinking of an ideal position. Now, for you to be 10 years of university management means that the least you would have been would be a senior lecturer. <coughs> and have been appointed chairman of a department and served for that long. Yeah. Otherwise, you cannot just walk in there and start making decisions. And the decisions have been weird. Some of those decisions that we look at sometimes, we just, you know, you wonder, yeah. where is the university going to? But if, right? you, if you raise a threshold, are you then not saying that you are actually seeking the very thing you're saying it does not achieve improvement. You want to ensure that the people who sit in this council are people who are knowledgeable. Yes. Are people who have a very clear understanding of what happens in the university. Th that is all true. But you see now the thing is this. Like I said, we gave it to who? The cabinet secretary. Who are politicians? <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Who are politicians? Now, it was not about, <laughs> let's get the best. Politicians don't work like that. Politicians work with who is looking after my interest, all right? And they are compromised. That is why there has been erratic changes within five years. Mm -hmm. If we have to come to the University of Nairobi, within five years, five council chairs. Five council chairs, okay? 
in five years. In five years, mm. you know, normally that would be completely. It would take thirty years, by the way, for those five to finish. If if each one of them is serving three years renewable ones, that will be thirty years. In the minimum, it will be fifteen. But this means each one of them is serving what? Uh, one yeah. year. Now, let me give you the consequences of that. Mm. Consequences directly affecting my membership. And this has to come out very clearly. In fact, there's the reason why I came here. Number one, that we are having stammering negotiations of CBS. I cannot negotiate any CBA. The internal one, I cannot. Why? Can you imagine <laughs> when I came into office, I started with uh, Professor Julia Ojiambo. These are very eminent men and women of society. Mm -hmm. I started with Professor Julia Ojiambo. Before I could go far, she was gone. And each person who comes in, you start saying, catch me up on what was happening here first. <laughs> you see that? Mm. So I start catching up on Professor Miriam Were. And as mm. you're catching up, one on year later, well. I am just about to, I have appointed negotiators and all. Miriam is gone. Now I am with another person, okay, Professor Anangwe. Very nice, genuine people. Again, I have to start what? Again. So we are having erratic what? Negotiation. I can never negotiate anything because I don't know who. Number two, administrative instabilities. Do you know something like a promotion of a person is so central, it affects their pension. But minus cancel, there are some positions, senior lecturer and above, mm. you cannot actually be promoted. If there's no what? Cancel. Cancel. All right. So my promotions stagnate. We get members actually suffering just because there is no what cancel and why because political patronage is at play all right number three funding upheavals and these funding upheavals have to do with the international partners and even the social partners local partners that we're having mm. this one comes his priority is different from the next one like i said within the two and a half years i've served as secretary three these funding upheavals, are they helping anyone? Number four, healthcare instability. You have to understand one thing. Lecturers, by the time you are actually at that level, especially at professorial level, it takes a toll on people's health. Mm. So it's a very delicate workforce. But you do not want this health of these people to be subject to the fellows who have to approve certain funding for them to be able to procure some things. So we're having a lot of health instability. And number five, piling bills. Who doesn't know that we are having pension issues, but no one goes to the bottom and find out why do we have these pension issues? No one is remitting here. Because this council comes with this priority. This one comes with this other priority. You don't end up paying. In fact, those pension, uh, those piling bills also have a direct influence to the direct service providers on things like module two payments. So what I'm saying is, is it possible to get a handle in this? Now you can see these five issues, which are very central to how the welfare of my membership is supposed to discharge duty, is affecting their performance. Don't we need to get a handle on this? And I have been saying, you know, these erratic changes, by the way, there's an analogy now, I can give you one. Mm. There's an analogy <laughs> in my community that the changes are so erratic it is the equivalent of <laughs> the defecating patterns of a duck if it is not doing it at this very moment then it's just about to <laughs> okay this is how erratic these changes have been can i ask a question <laughs> is there a reason for this erratic change i can understand <laughs> I can understand how difficult it would be to discharge your duty when the person who makes the decision is here today, gone tomorrow, and there's somebody else who comes in. But looking at the fundamental reason as to why there is such a high um, uh, movement in that particular position that obviously affects governance, why is that? Have you been able to find out? Well, like I said, and I'll keep repeating, political patronage. You see that? Hmm. Political patronage. You are never going to change the sports of a hyena. Okay? To imagine, like I said, this is a good idealism. We started by saying the new constitution, get professionals to be cabinet secretaries. We have kept watering down. Then we said, now let's just get the politicians in. 
Politicians are not going to change their sports. They are just going to be politicians. Okay? So, if you go to this community with this tribe and the university is held there, you will find even governors are protesting that we want our person. Why? Because the university now has become an employment bureau. Mm. Okay? Mm. We want our person to be in charge of this. <laughs> so that, why? We will now put our people. We will take tenders. Look. And the council members themselves, you think that they actually appreciate the kind of enormity and weight of their jobs. So that when they look, they see, you know what? University of Nairobi has been here. Mm. Where do we want it to go in future? How far should we be able to push it? So that probably the roads in Chiromo could be named after us. <laughs> Them they are interested in. What will I get here? Mm. What, are we okay? what, what will I get? What, what, what can I do so that I benefit myself? Not what will I give this university. Mm. Okay? And it's across the board. It is not just the University of Nairobi. We are talking even universities from Kenyatta. Mura, all these universities, the fellows who go there, you can imagine, you attend a meeting. Eh? Because, you know, the more you attend these meetings, that's how you get paid. Mm -hmm. You know, the only person with a the retainer there is the chair. The rest are only supposed to be paid allowances. Mm -hmm. So that it defrays on their cost to come and help this institution. That is the thinking. Yeah. It is not a paid up job. Mm. But then, because some of these fellas, I, I'm afraid, I don't want to call them any name. Mm -hmm. Because they're not even here. Fellas <laughs> is good enough. The fellas thing works. is this. Mm. Fella is good. Eh? Mm. <laughs> Someone wants to attend a meeting today, all right, tomorrow, the very next day. And they create the crisis so that the meetings are there. And once we attend the meeting, you know, you have to write minutes. You do minutes. Eh? Mm. You don't sign them. You run away so that they call you back to do it. Sign a minute. You know, if you are coming from far to sign, a, they have to fly you in. Of course. <laughs> okay? They have to pick you. Mm. They have to pay you that allowance. The there's a per diem. Mm. All right? This is what they are interested in. You will find if there's a, a council member, for instance, if it is the University of Nairobi, okay? Then he comes from, say, Marsabit. Okay? We know the chap stays right here. Okay? <laughs> But every time he will be filing his report, <laughs> he will be coming from Marasabit. Yes. He will be coming from Mar So, <laughs> think about what is happening. Think about what is happening. Uh, Prof, meanwhile, what would you like to see? Here is what you have proposing. painted the picture. This is what is wrong. Yes. Okay. What would you like to see? Here is what we would like to see. Why can't we go and borrow from best practice? Okay? Mm. I would want a a council that is populated by people first that altruism let it be there and we are capable of looking for these people but then let's go to the membership itself let's start from the stakeholders okay our students there yes we need them mm -hmm. yes we are not going to be making decisions but without them there is no university exactly that means why can't we even get some of those on board mm -hmm. The lecturers, they are supposed to be represented. Mm -hmm. Let's say the professors. Why can't we have professors selected among their own peers? Select one or two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Put them there. All right? Mm -hmm. Work as representatives. And every time I say that, people say, you know, Maloba, you are looking for a job in council. This is, you know, fine. I, I can't help when people make such kind of decisions. I want you to understand one thing. Even if WAS was given that responsibility, we will appoint someone who is not actually an employee, an official of WASU. But we must get a best. Okay? Mm -hmm. How about the local community? Okay? And when you say local community, it is the alumni. Mm. Do you know the depth of human resource the University of Nairobi has produced? Why can't we look for one person among the alumni? We already have an alumni organization with a chair. Mm. Okay? Why can't we have one from there? And why can't we change this act so that it reflects that for every university? The ex-official, fine, the vice-chancellor. Mm. Will we have these stammering changes? I doubt it, okay? And you would see that re-engineering the structure of how councils are supposed to be constituted yeah. uh, will actually be the first step at ensuring stability. Mm. I will now know that when I'm negotiating a CBA, it is not a musical chair. You get? There is some stability. There is some stability. And I will actually be seeing the end, okay, 
I'll say I can actually do this and it will actually come to a close. Mm. All right? Every other thing will actually have a finiteness about it. Okay. So it's about inclusion and representation of the various stakeholders into yes. the council. Yes. That oversees the management and governance of this public institution. Exactly. Now we are through like the council. Looking, looking at the JSC. The JSC makes sure that you know we have magistrates and judges are represented. Court of Appeal judges, uh, Supreme Court judges, law society is represented, and the public is represented in that conversation. That's the same kind of thing that you're saying. Yes. Okay. Council done. Now, after we constitute the council, hmm. now we have to go back to this thing called the charter. The charter is actually the algorithm that creates the university. Hmm. All right. That is the equation that now creates that university. Hmm. Okay. We should stick to it to the letter. I, I, I can assure you if you were to download the University of Nairobi Charter, mm. it is very elaborate. It does not have names of anyone. And I want people to remember that. The reason why it does not have any name of anyone, because it envisages that people will come and I'll they go. will go. So there is no name. When they say there will be a chancellor, there's no name there. Mm. There will be a chair of council. I have already talked about that. There will be these positions. For instance, at the University of Nairobi, they say there will be two deputy vice chancellors. Minimum. Okay? At least two. Mm -hmm. You can decide to add. Fine. There's no problem. But that will be on advice sometimes also of Senate. Mm -hmm. Okay? They even stipulate the various positions underneath. This is what the charter says, and I have been saying to whoever can listen. Is there a possibility someone is looking at this charter and saying, you know what? Maybe we should just only make reference to it. You remember, whenever we quarrel about what is going wrong with Kenya, what do we do? We say, what does the constitution say? Mm. Isn't it? Mm. Why can't we also keep waving that and simply ask, what does the charter say? Okay, we have a disagreement about what should happen here and here and here okay what does the charter say have you asked that question so many times and to what, anyone who can listen okay and what has the interesting what has the response been when you say here is a document or here is a a guide that we're supposed to follow in the events that we get into a troublesome one like we are in now i'm so glad and you what, asked this question so you if know, i can finish the question okay. so what has been the response when you've asked that question silence Okay. And this is the reason I'm on Spice FM today morning, so that people can hear it at least loud and clear. All right? Because if they were listening, do you think I would need to come? No. Mm -hmm. Then things would be running well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The reason I'm egged on into a radio, I mean, a, a, a radio station with so much reach mm -hmm. is because I want to pass this message loudly. Okay? When I, when I speak within the corridors of the universities, I'm not heard. People start saying, you know, Maloba is being, he's, he's been bought. What? Oh, oh, oh. He, he's, he's doing something because someone is engineering him. Mm. The narrative has to be spun somehow to discredit my, uh, my being so that my message is drowned, mm. which is unfair. It is so totally unfair. Dr. And Maloba. I understand. Have you approached the Committee of Education in the National Assembly to start conversations about amending the Universities Act? Now, that is when we come to this thing called the Presidential Working Party. Mm -hmm. I can share with you what I presented mm. in that Education Working Party. And you see, here is the good thing. First, a lot of the membership were from even the University of Nairobi, including the chair, mm. is an emeritus professor mm. of the University of Nairobi. Okay? Mm -hmm. It was populated by even people from the University of Nairobi, and we were so glad, we were so optimistic. Did your recommendations end up in the recommendations of the working party? <sighs> there is an opportunity, that's all I can say. Okay. There's an opportunity that for us can. to be able to what? To engage further. To engage further okay. and actually get this into there so that we can end this it is not just the university of nairobi okay. it is kenyatta university you see that mm. like i told you if i was to tell you what has happened over the five years mm. there was one professor i mean dr timothy kirui 
he, he did not even can you imagine he never even sat on that chair <laughs> where was the chair I mean, he never even assumed office. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people ran to court. You know, there's a fella called Tadai Ozoban. He went to court. Mm. You know, the, he never. Matiangi was even told by Judge Odunga, what you are doing mm. is wrong. Mm. And that time, you can imagine, and here is the other, here is the irony. Mm. You can imagine cabinet secretaries have actually been University of Nairobi lecturers. Mm. That, that's why sometimes I, you know, from... Uh, Matiangi, then Kaimenyi, then uh, Magoha, all right? All of them. There was Amina in between. There was, yeah, there was, she's still alumni. <laughs> okay? She's still alumni. <laughs> so it's it's something which we need to keep engaging. Mm. I really, I, I mean, I had so much which I would have wish, wished that we keep talking. This We've only scratched the surface and it's a good uh, point to start. And thank you very much for joining us. We'll invite you again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dr. Maloba Wekesa, Secretary General of the University's Academic Staff Union representing the University of Nairobi. He's been our guest. We're talking about governance of public universities, the case of UON and other public universities. What's working, what's not? He says, first of all, this law has been an experiment. This experiment has flopped. It's time for us to relook it. All right. Good morning. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.